بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this series of videos I want to introduce to you some of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Well, some of the companions I'm sure you have heard about, but maybe others you not uh, you haven't heard about uh, or haven't heard about yet. Um, today, to start off, to get started with this series, I want to start with a companion uh, by the name of Julaybib. Julaybib. I'm sure maybe this uh, story of Julaybib that I am about to tell you. Uh, will sound familiar to you and if you know it it's quite good inshallah uh, it's good to remember again this story uh, if we start by this story of Julaybib just uh, with the name starting with the name of Julaybib his name was quite uh, unusual and incomplete Julaybib radiallahu anhu wa arda may Allah be pleased with him uh, the name uh, in fact means uh, small garment, small garment. Jilbab, jilbab, and we have jilbab, which is actually a garment, and smaller jilbab is julaybib. So it's kind of a diminutive uh, form of the word jilbab. The name of julaybib is already an indication that. Uh, this companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, quite small and short. Even he was of uh, dwarf-like stature. Uh, I know this word dwarf is not very good and not very nice to talk about someone and say that someone is, is a dwarf, right? Uh, but uh, in fact, he was quite highly uh, disliked by the people around him. And just knowing that he was called Julaybib gives you an idea about how people were considering him or how they were judging him. More than that, Julaybib is described by the Arabs as being Danim, Danim which means um, ugly or deformed or even of uh, repulsive appearance. Another thing to keep in mind is that Julaybib which is actually something more, even more disturbing for the society in which he lived. His lineage was not known, and there was no uh, record of who his mother or his father was, or to what tribe he belonged. Now, this is quite an important fact, because we know that in addition to the physical uh, disability of Julaybib, there was this uh, quote-unquote moral disability uh, of not knowing where he came from, uh, no lineage. Uh, and we know that the Arabs of that time, and even uh, until today, to a certain extent, um, they put a high emphasis on the tree, the family tree, and who your parents, your great-grandparents, your family, your ancestors are. So this can be said to be more of a, a moral uh, disability for Julaybib and for uh, being placed in a society in which he lived. So, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, Julaybib could not expect any compassion or help or any protection or any support of any kind from a society that put such a big emphasis on the importance of family and tribal connections. Uh, as a consequence, because of this, lack of uh, lineage, all that was known of him was that he was an Arab and that as far as this growing community of uh, Muslims at that time was concerned, he was one of the Ansar, the Ansar. Now remember my dear brothers and sisters who the Ansar were. As a quick reminder, the Ansar were the local inhabitants of Medina who took Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his followers, the Muhajirun, the people who made hijrah or migration, into their homes. So the Ansar were the people who welcomed them when they escaped from Mecca 
to Medina and made the Hijrah or the migration. So coming back to Julaibib, perhaps Julaibib belonged to one of the uh, outlying tribes beyond Medina and he had drifted into the city or another scenario is that he could even have been uh, from among the Ansar of the city itself. So we do not know for sure. But from what we know, the disabilities under which Julaibib lived uh, would have been enough to have him uh, laughed at or ridiculed or shunned in any society, not just the society of that time. And in fact, there is something that we know of is that there was a certain person who prohibited Julaibib from entering his home. There is a man by the name of Abu Barza of the Aslam tribe. He prohibited specifically Julaibib from entering his home and he said to his wife, Do not let Julaibib enter among you. If he does, if he does, meaning if he enters, I shall certainly do something terrible to him. So just uh, imagine how the treatment towards this Sahabi, this companion was. Uh, and probably because he was teased and scoffed at in the company of men, it is reported that Julaibib used to take refuge in the company of women, and that is also something that uh, gave him his kunya or his name Julaibib, small jilbab, or small garment, being in the garment always uh, hiding. Now, I have a few questions to ask based on all this context uh, about Julaibib. Given this negative context because uh, of his situation, his physical deformities, we can ask, is there any hope or was there any hope of Julaibib being treated with respect and consideration? Another question is, was there any hope of him finding uh, emotional satisfaction as an individual and as a man? Meaning to find a wife. Another question, was there any hope of him enjoying the relationships which others take for granted? Not just marital relationships, but also regular uh, relationships among peers and friends. And also in the new society emerging that of the Prophet Wasallam, the one that the Prophet was preparing, and uh, under the guidance of Rasulullah Wasallam, was Julaibib so insignificant to the Prophet, who was at the same time so busy or preoccupied with the big affairs of state? Now the answer to all the questions that I've asked is simply no. Just as he was aware of the great issues of life and destiny. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was also aware of the needs and sensibilities of his most humble companions. One day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa having Julaibib in his mind, he went, he went to, uh, to one of the Ansar. So he, he went to meet one of the Ansar and he told him the following. I want to have your daughter married. Now imagine Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and imagine how, how much of an honor that would be if someone approached you as a father and said to you, I want to have your daughter married. And you would imagine that this is a great honor. And in fact, this is exactly what the, uh, the Ansari man replied. He said, Na'am wa qurratu ayn. How wonderful and blessed, Ya Rasulullah. And what a delight to the eye this would be. Qurratu ayn. We know that means something that makes your eye delighted. I.e., it makes you happy. So this was his reply. And he was obviously happy, overjoyed. But the Prophet then followed on and said, I do not want her for myself. So the man, the Ansari, said, Then for whom, Ya Rasulullah, for whom do you want this? Uh, do you want my daughter? So obviously the man was let down by that. And then the Rasulullah replied for Julaibib, for Julaibib, 
I want her for Julie Beep. So the Ansari at that moment must have been too shocked to give his own reaction and he simply said, I will consult with her mother. And off he went to his wife and he simply said to his wife when he entered the home, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah grant him uh, blessings and grant him peace, wants to have our daughter married. So the woman, his wife, was so excited and so thrilled. So her reply was the same as her husband initially, and even more. She said, Naam wa qurratu ayn, sharafu dunya wa azzu dahr. What a wonderful idea and what a delight to the eye this would be. But then her husband said, he doesn't want to marry her himself, but he wants to marry her to Julaybib. She was completely shocked. And she said to her husband, to Julaybib, no, never to Julaybib. No, by the living God, we shall not marry her to him. She protested. So the Ansari had his answer and he was about to return to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to inform him of what his wife had said. But then the daughter, who was the primary person to be concerned, who was actually the one everyone was talking about, she had heard the mother's protestations and asked, Man khatabani ilaykuma? In other words, who has asked you to marry me or who has asked for my hand from you and from my father? So her mother told her of the Prophet's request وسلم, for her hand in marriage to Julaybib. And then when she heard that the request had come from Rasulullah and that her mother was absolutely opposed to this idea, she was greatly bothered. She was greatly perturbed. Listen to what she said, my dear brothers and sisters. She said, زوجوني إياه فإن رسول الله لا يضيعني زوجوني إياه فإن رسول الله لا يضيعني Send me or marry me to him, to this man for the Prophet of Allah shall certainly not bring ruin to me. Rasulullah will never bring ruin to me. Subhanallah, this was her reply. This was the reply of a truly great person who had a clear understanding of what was required of her as a Muslim. Imagine what a great satisfaction and fulfillment a Muslim can find when responding willingly to the request and commands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No doubt this female companion of the Prophet whose name we do not even know, had heard the verse of the Qur'an from Surah Al-Ahzab. And as a reminder, Surah Al-Ahzab is chapter 33 of the Qur'an. There is a verse in this chapter, uh, verse 36, that says the following, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِيْنًا The translation of this verse, chapter 33, verse 36, Surah Al-Ahzab, goes as follows. It is not for a believing man or a believing woman when Allah and His Messenger have decided a matter that they should thereafter have any choice about their affair. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has certainly strayed into a clear error. Subhanallah. My dear brothers and sisters, we, are, we have to stop and ponder where are we in comparison to this woman? In fact, if we think about this, this verse was revealed in connection with the marriage of Zainab bin Tijahsh and Zayd ibn al-Haritha. And this marriage was arranged by Rasulullah wasallam to show the egalitarian spirit of Islam. At first, Zainab was highly offended at the thought of marrying Zayd, who was a former slave, and she refused to do so. 
Then the Prophet prevailed upon them both, and they were married. Eventually, the marriage, however, ended in divorce, and Zainab was eventually married to Rasulullah himself. Now let's go back to the story of Julaybib. It is said that this Ansari girl read the verse mentioned earlier to her parents and said, I am satisfied and I submit myself to whatever Rasulullah deems good for me. This came to the Prophet's ears. He heard about her reaction and he prayed for her. He made a dua for her. So, subhanAllah, among the Ansar, it is said that there was not a more eligible bride than her. She was married by the Prophet to Julaybib and they lived together until Julaybib died. Which actually brings us to ask the question, how did Julaybib die? Julaybib went on a battle or an expedition with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at some point they encountered some mushrikeen, some polytheists. And there was a battle. When the battle was over, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked his companions, Man tafqidun? Man tafqidun? Who have you lost? Or have you lost anyone? Some of them replied, some of the companions said that they had lost some relatives, so they gave the names of some of their relatives or close friends who were killed. And the Prophet then asked another group of companions and asked them the same questions. Same question, Man tafqidun? Have you lost anyone? So another group answered that they had lost no one. Uh, meaning that they had no person uh, lost in this battle, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَأَمَّا أَنَا فَأَفْقَدُوا جُلَيْبِيبِ But I have lost Julaybib. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added to them, إِلْتَمِسُوهُ فِي الْقَتْلَى Search for him in the battlefield or search for him among the fallen ones. So, the companion searched and found Julaybib beside seven mushrikeen whom he had struck before meeting his end. And then the Prophet wasallam stood up and went to the spot where Julaybib, his short, deformed companion, lay. He stood over him, then he carried him and embraced him and said, قَاتَلَهُمْ he killed them, or he killed seven of them, and then was killed. This man is of me, and I am of him. He repeated this two or three times. Can you imagine the honor of having someone say about you, This man or woman is of me, and I am of him. The Prophet ﷺ then took him, took Julaybib in his arms. He dug for him a grave and himself placed him in the grave. He did not wash him. As we know, shuhada or martyrs are not washed before being buried. And that was the story of Julaybib, subhanAllah. Julaybib and his wife are not usually among the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who we hear about, whose exploits are uh, recounted with admiration as they should be. But in the small facts that are known about them and which have been told in this short uh, story, we see how humble human beings were given hope and were given dignity by the Prophet ﷺ, where once they used to be despair and self-debasement, subhanAllah. If we go to this attitude of the unknown and unnamed Ansari girl who readily agreed to be the wife of a physically unattractive man, imagine her attitude which reflected a profound understanding of this deen of Islam. It also reflected about her personality, the effacement of the personal desires, and even when she could have counted on the support of her parents, but she sided with the Prophet, and this reflects a total disregard for social pressures. It reflects, above all, a ready confidence in the wisdom 
and the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in submitting herself to whatever the Prophet deemed good. This is the attitude of the true believer, brothers and sisters. In Julaybib, there is the example of a person who was almost regarded as a social outcast because of his appearance. But with help, with confidence, with time, with encouragement by the Prophet wasallam, he was able to perform acts of courage and to make the supreme sacrifice of shahada and then deserve what the Prophet said about him. هَذَا مِنِّي وَأَنَا مِنْهِ He is of me and I am of him. جزاكم الله خيرا for listening. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.